Hey everybody, Dennis Prager, Julie Hartman, the Dennis and Julie podcast. You sent me a very touching uh, email, and people should know, you send me the emails. Many, you get. Yeah, yes. many of them, not all of them. And I love them. I, I th- They mean a lot to me. They mean a lot to me too. Uh, oh, I know they do. Uh, th- this one was from... Was he was he a former professor? What, yes, what, he was yeah. a former university president. Oh yeah, former university president. And oh yes, he took issue as well, very very you know respectfully and so on with something that I had said hmm. on, on the religious uh, in the religious realm. We're going to talk about religion today. Uh, that's this is what we do. You should just know. <laughs> Right before the podcast, we go. What you have something on your mind? To which, and by the way, it's, it's, it's almost every week the same thing. And you go, yes, yeah. <laughs> and I go, well, so do I. <laughs> it would or, be rare. Or, or, uh, something yeah. would be wrong if one of us didn't have something on our minds. Well, well, that's a, that's a fair point. But the 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 other is that sometimes we both have something in mind, and we don't do either one. I know. It just something spontaneously arises. But I, I, I do want people to know how much we value their feedback. So much. And, you know, we, we have an amazingly diverse crew of people who listen to Dennis and Julie. I have gotten an email from a 12-year-old who listens. I got an email from a 95-year-old who also listens. Diversity, even in, I, I think I've mentioned this on the show, but there are two transgender individuals who have emailed me telling me how much this podcast means to them. There's a woman who uh, says that she listens as she gets her chemotherapy treatments. And mm. there are people, I don't mean this as a brag, but there are people who are names that you would 100% know mm-hmm. who also listen to Dennis and Julie. Which, by the way, reminds me, do do America a favor if that's not arrogant of me to say, and do us a favor. And it's there's no it's not a financial incentive. I just want more people to hear what we have to say. It's it's unique uh, what we have. So tell people about Dennis and Julie, or send them you know a link to it. All right. Anyway, enough of that. So you have uh, a religious subject in mind. I do. I I want to talk about prayer. We, to my knowledge, have not discussed it. And I don't even know. I know you so well, and I know your religious life so well because I've been to your Torah minion. I go to Shabbat every Friday night, but I have no idea at all the extent to which prayer plays a role in your life. I don't know if you pray every day. Do, Do you pray every day? So to go to your first question, what do you think the answer is about the role of prayer in life? I don't think it plays a big role in your life. And why do you why do you not think I just know you well. I I don't think that I I think you're so rational. You're someone who gets your spiritual nutrients from reading and talking about God instead of directly talking with him. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't I don't you're get, 100% right. I don't, I don't, well, that's no, you're very interesting. Right. I don't you're get right. the sense that you talk with God. That is so, I'm, I'm so glad we've introduced this because in my burgeoning or continuing religious life, prayer is a huge part of it. In fact, I so would say. So what does that mean? What do, do you, are these spontaneous prayers or are they, are they written prayers? So no, they're, they're spontaneous. So. Let me back up and say that prayer was never a part of my life. I mean, religion for most of my life wasn't a part of my life. But I have recently, ever since I went to Rome, I have recently tried to make it a fixture of my life where every single morning I wake up and I pray. And when I was in Rome, I would do the pray the rosary because I'm not good at prayer. I get distracted very easily. I would fear that I was doing it wrong. And praying the rosary was something that just helped me. It physically helped me, um, rhetorically helped me, but now I've shifted away from that because I'm I'm able to actually talk directly with God. And so to answer your question, I do it every morning, and sometimes it takes different forms. I actually know someone who, for instance, writes out questions that they have for God every single morning on a piece of paper, and that is her form of prayer. But for me... It starts with thanks, and then it kind of branches out into other things, which we can get to. So did you today? 
Mm-hmm. How long? Well, I try to make them quite long. I try to make them a minimum of 10 minutes. Oftentimes, I don't go over that, but 10 minutes. Well, if people say quite long, they don't think 10 minutes is quite long. I'm, I'm, I'm no, not that's fair. with you. For I, me, it's quite long. Okay. It's more than and, a and, minute. And is it mostly gratitude? Or, or I always start with gratitude, but one of the things that I'm amazed at is the versatility of prayer. I will start off by, I always start off thank, thanking God for, for the day, for my family, for my work environment, for my health, you know, all that. And then I go on and I start thanking him for things that I didn't even realize I was grateful for. <laughs> like, I, or, I, you know, I'll, I'll thank them for random people who I encounter him. I don't know why I said them. Yeah, I was for, curious. I know. Yeah. I was thinking, did she mean the Trinity? No, I didn't, I, no, I wasn't. no, no. Thanking him. I'm sorry. Um, like I started, you know, there's this guy, I have mentioned him, who works here. He's he's the parking attendant, Arturo. Right. And I have such a lovely exchange with him. And then I start thanking God for Arturo. And then it goes and I start praying for Arturo's family. And then I start praying for, for families who are, I don't want to say Arturo's business, but who may be affected by similar things that Arturo's family is affected with. And then it reminds me of somebody else. And then it, and it's just by the, by the end of the prayer, I'm like praying for the whole world. It's amazingly versatile. I, and it's, and it's lovely because it really, you said something in a recent Dennis and Julie, you said that prayer means to examine oneself the Hebrew, in Hebrew. The Hebrew. Yes. I love that. And it, but I think it also means to really almost examine other people too. Like I, I, I was this morning because of the story you told me about your grandson. I was praying for you, Sue, Reed, Brandon, David, <laughs> Daniel, Jack, Aaron, Felicia. Like it's amazing how many how many branches of things that I can pray for. I started praying for a friend whose parent died. And then I started thinking of a random girl who I went to elementary school with whose parent died. And what a beautiful thing that in 10 minutes, you can think of people from your past. You can think of people who you know very well, who you never know in the case of Arturo's family. I mean, it's, again, the word I have for it is versatile. It's beautiful. Uh, It is. so I've I've been keeping quiet. I'm prepared to keep quiet for much of this. No, I have more to say, but I want to ask you some questions. So let me just offer a sort of, uh, oh yeah, why do they have like trigger warnings? Oh yeah. Or, or, or stuff at the beginning or the end of, you know, no animal was hurt in the making of this film. Yes, yes. So... This is a difficult subject for me, not because it's at all difficult for me to deal with, but because many people, I've been the religious, a or a religious inspiration for very many people, which I'm very grateful for and want to be. So I have sort of not spoken about the prayer issue, although I never avoid it if it's raised. I didn't, I'm not avoiding it. Yeah, you. you you raised it <laughs> well you uh, no right. uh, you raised it right. and i said fine so I, in other words i didn't say you know what it's not my 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 field of choice or mm-hmm. specialty mm-hmm. uh so let me just say it before i answer anything about prayer specifically there's a beautiful uh hebrew slash jewish I want to say view, but teaching, that's a teaching. It, Jewish prayer is very rarely spontaneous, which is an issue I have with it as it happens. It's all, it's all written out. And, and it has its virtue and it has its downside. But in any event, it's all written out. And it's for Jews who pray regularly, according to Jewish law, it's three times a day. And there is one one of the prayers that said all three times begins, Blessed are you, God. I have to go from the Hebrew, so it's confusing. I would see. Um, from the creators of Jesus Revolution comes a new film that's bound to touch your heart. White Bird, a wonder story. Discover the moving tale of Julian 
as he uncovers his grandmother's incredible journey to escape Nazi-occupied France during World War II, based on the beloved book by the best-selling author of Wonder, this inspiring film demonstrates how one simple act of kindness can create ripples that last a lifetime. Directed by the visionary behind Finding Neverland and featuring stellar performances by Gillian Anderson and Academy Award winner Helen Mirren, White Bird promises to be a cinematic experience you won't forget. Catch it in theaters starting October 4th. For tickets and more details, visit whitebird.movie. Oh, yes. Hello. Hey, Abraham. Hey, it's Hakvel. Hey, Yaakov. Blessed are you, God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That, that's, that's a regular standard prayer. And then it continues. And I was taught at a very early age, why doesn't it just say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? This is, by the way, this is, was the great, a great, if not the great gift of Jewish learning. I was taught always ask, why does it say X and not Y? Mm. That's how I read Very newspaper important. articles. Yes. That is the reason I can analyze things the way I do. I was taught that. So is a great, if you didn't have that training, you would never think it's to ask the question. source of wisdom. But this is the great, always give that example. The prayer is, blessed are you, uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And, and so the question is asked by the rabbis 2,000 years ago, why isn't the prayer the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob? And the standard religious answer has been because Abraham related to God in his way, Isaac in yeah. his way, and Jacob in his way. Mm. So How interesting. it's one God, but it's really all... My God is not the same exactly as your God. It's the same God. Right. But it's sort of like... Well, that's the concept of the Trinity. Very much. That's fine. But it's it, and, and for people outside of religion, here's a, an example. My brother and I have the same mother and father, but they're not, the, they're not the same. Of course, they're the same by identity, but my my relationship to our parents is so different than my brother's relationship to our parents. It's true for every family. So in that sense, so therefore... My approach, oh, why am I saying this? My approach to prayer is not standard or normative, but it's not illegitimate either. It's, it's just Dennis's way of relating to God is, is prayer-wise not the norm. Okay, so I love this podcast for so many reasons, and one of them is I get to know you better. What is Dennis Prager's way of prayer? You who over your shoulder, if we can get the camera, wrote all those Torah commentaries. You have a very, very strong relationship with God. Or maybe actually that's not the right way to put it. You have a very, I think you have a very strong responsibility that you feel to God. But do you... Do God you, is omnipresent in my life. I know. I well, cl- That is clearly. correct. So yes. what is your... Do you but feel I, that you I, have a relationship with him? I never use that language i know you don't that's why i'm asking the question because i've never heard you by the way this is what i when i explain to people why dennis and julie is different from 40 years of my radio i said because she brings things out of me that as open as i am and i'm very open uh, but someone will always bring something out of you that you don't necessarily offer on you or not because i hide it it's just not being brought out. So this is a this is obviously a good example. So I I never use the language of my uh, do I have a relationship with God? Of course I have a relationship with God. I mean that uh, you 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 how could something be omnipresent in your life? But but so but this is the blessing and curse of my being very rational. So, so I'm just thinking, this is, again, this is, you're bringing this out. I've never raised this point. Do I have a relationship with Beethoven? It's a very serious question. This is not meant to be cute. And I've never thought of that. 
Beethoven play, or, or, or Bach or Haydn, and any of the great uh, composers, music is a very important part of my life. Do I have a relationship with Beethoven? What would you answer that question? Beethoven makes me cry and makes me laugh and makes me excited and gives me strength and, and I, I move. Do I have a relationship with Beethoven? What would you say the answer to that question is? No. Okay. Well, then, I don't know if I have a relationship with God. But it's so. But it's dishonest to say I don't have a relationship with God. It's just I... I I'm sure I really am searching for words. Be- who, who has meant a lot to you? Jane Austen? Is that is that right? Charlotte Bronte. Who, Charlotte Bronte. Do you have a relationship with Charlotte Bronte? No. That's not accurate. Uh, then, then relationship, well, it, it may be accurate. I take that back. But then you, we have to define relationship, and I hate doing that. I was, well, let's define the word, but we have to. God is omnipresent in my life, and yet here I am saying, I don't know if I have a relationship with him, but I... uh, Boy, is this good, by the way. Why? It's so interesting to me, and I don't know this at all. I, I have my suspicions based on what I've read and observed with you. But I've never heard you talk about this, even in all of our private time together. Yeah, well, I haven't. No, you're forcing me, the word, see, okay, so are all relationships by definition two-way? I just, I I know you're going to view this as a cop-out. I think with God, it's different. I really do. Well, no, if if with God, it's different, then you you're changing the definition of the word relationship. Well, of course it's different because God is your creator. No, God is your I know moral that. Authority. Okay. God well, is, well, all right. So you know, it's I different. Mean, okay, wait. The relationship I have with you is different than the one that I have with my brother. But the word relationship has not changed its meaning. So you're asking if it can be two ways? No, not can it be. Or does Must it, mu- it be? Yes. Okay. That's my preliminary answer. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, okay, what do you mean by two ways? Like, for instance, I know people who have a, who, to use their language, feel that they have a strong relationship with a deceased relative. Someone who they, I, I know a girl who feels like she really knew her grandfather fought in World War II and died. And she, you know, the, 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 da, the, the grandfather actually wrote a book. Um, he he was injured in battle and then he wrote a book and then he died a few years later and, and the granddaughter never met him. But she feels that she really knows him through the book and through the family stories and has a, has a kind of relationship with this individual. Now, I would say that that is a, that is a two-way, in a sense, relationship because you're not, you're not going in blind. You didn't know the person, but you have a lot of information about the person. Okay. It, then well, what I, would you then, say? Then, no, that if that's if that's what it means, I've always understood the word relationship as meaning two ways. That God, I, 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 if what you said is what relationship can mean, and I acknowledge it may not have only one meaning, I have a relationship with God. So I, I want, but I, I don't believe. Oh, forgive me. No, I just please. don't believe. I don't believe he communicates to me. Okay. I believe he has communicated to me through the Torah. That's the reason I've spent my life teaching the Torah. God absolutely speaks to me, but not to Dennis. Not not the way I'm speaking to you. Right. But there are peop- many people, and, I, and I, I don't know if I envy them, but I certainly respect them, feel that God communicates to them. I don't I don't have that. Oh boy, I know I said it, but this is so interesting. I have so many questions for you. So first, let's consider you you said a few moments ago that you feel like you do have a relationship with God and on the other hand you would say that so well, you feel that you if, don't. If this girl had a has a relationship with the grandfather she never knew mm-hmm. and I believe she does. Mhm. 
I have a then I have a relationship with God. So let's entertain. She that. doesn't believe. Forgive me, because she doesn't believe that the the grandfather talks to her. No. Okay. So when I have heard people speak about, especially my Christian friends, are, Jews don't use the language of uh, of a relationship with God. It doesn't mean that they don't, but it's not their language. Each religion has its own vocabulary, so to speak. Uh, it's it's like Jews say they're in love with Judaism. Jew, Christians don't say they're in love with Christianity. They say they're in love with Christ. It's a very it's it's a difference you've never heard, but I'm, I'm I'm bringing out. It's very fascinating. Well, forgive me for cutting in, but I actually think that is a very characteristic Jewish and Christian difference. It makes sense to me that Jews don't talk in the way of having a relationship with God because the whole point of Christ is to make God incredibly personal. By being a person. By being a person. That's by right. becoming incarnate yes. and having flesh and walking right. among us. Yeah. So that, that actually completely makes sense. Go on. But it does. And and by the way, it's it's a sort of advantage uh, for for Christians. Uh, that they that this immediacy vis a vis God through God coming as a person is not available to a non Christian. It, it, forget just Jews. It makes, to, to it makes it way easier to believe in God, that's for sure. Right. Yes, it does. It does. I, 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 I acknowledge that. Uh, on the other hand, we our love of the, the, the Torah, there's no an analog to... to uh, Christians don't say they're in, they, they love uh, the, the New Testament. They, they they believe in it. Mm. They adore it. That's they, right. They, they they love the person who animates yes, it. Yes, right. So so it, it, it's I've always uh, I because I know Jews and Christians so well. I say Jesus is to or the Torah is the physical Torah, not just the Torah's words. The physical Torah is to Jews what Jesus is to Christians. We kiss the Torah when it is it every. Saturday when it's, when it's taken around the synagogue yeah. when it's taken it's on the yard. It's a lovely thing. It, it's a, and it's an emotional thing. You very. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so if relationship, so uh, did you? If because you had something, that, you had a whole. Well, I just want to. Okay. I want to prompt you here. So I want to consider both of these things. I want to understand when Dennis Prager says I have a relationship with God, and then I want to understand when because and, and by the way, I completely understand. I feel the same way. In some ways, I feel like I have a relationship with God. In other ways, I would say more that I struggle with it. But I, I want to entertain these two. Let's start with the relationship. What does your relationship with God look like? What role does he uh, play I, in your daily oh, he, life? He plays a, he, absolutely in my daily life in that, first of all, I think about him a lot, which is amazing when I think about it. When I think about thinking about it, I think about it a lot. But it, it's true. I, for, I constantly think, what would God want me to do? I would say that that is the single most frequent God-centered sentence of my vocabulary. How healthy? Oh, I I think it is uh, absolutely. That that's that's the most important question I think people should ask. By the way, what does God want you to do? Mm. Uh, what I, I can't imagine what could be tied with that in terms of importance. It harkens back to, I think it was John F. Kennedy's father, Joseph Kennedy, who said this, and then JFK repeated it in his, or actually, maybe it was a, sorry, JFK went to a school where the, where the, the motto of the school was ask not what you what your school can do for you but what you can do for your school yeah i didn't and think he it said was joseph it. kennedy because joseph kennedy was not a yeah a, that's right a respectable figure. <laughs> that's that's exactly right and jfk said ask not what your what what your country can do oh, for he you he took but it you, from the school he did yes that's he took it from the school fascinating mm -hmm. and so i think you have that with god ask not totally. what god can do for that's you that's right but yes. what you can do for god my dear jules I, 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 you, you, you warm my heart. You, you have summarized God and me in a sentence. That's right. I do not ask what He can do for me. I don't. I don't. Literally twice in my life, one as a child for something silly, and one as an adult for something super serious. Did I ever ask for anything? And 
it's a it it's eerie that it it happened. What I asked for did take place. What is that? Oh, it was it was really I could say it publicly. It was a prayer for Aaron, my my younger son. Oh God, I could cry. Yeah, I could cry too. Maybe, I, I really, I, I, I think, really could I cry. I think God could cry because he's such a special person, and, yeah. and it could have ended so differently. Right. This is this is Dennis's son who struggled with addiction, and I become quite close with him. He, he he he, his late mom and I adopted him at birth, but we did not know that she was a meth addict, and it had its impact. But so, he he's he he is terrific, and it was shortly after. I made that prayer. If you're still waiting to buy gold sitting on the sidelines, might cost you precious gains. This is Dennis Prager for AmFed Coin and Bullion. That's my choice for precious metals. The current economic climate could make buying gold a very desirable safe haven commodity. The government's overprinting of money, the fluctuation of interest rates, and high inflation can all impact the value of gold. And it's why you should seriously consider buying now. I've been working with Amfed Coin and Bullion's owner, Nick Rovich, for years. I'm glad that I jumped into the precious metals market when I did, but it's never too late. Nick's been in the industry for over 42 years. And he's proud of providing transparency and fair pricing to build long-term relationships. Nick and his team have my back, and they will have yours. They recommend what's in my best interest, not theirs. And I never worry about hidden commissions or huge markups. If you're interested in buying or selling, call AmFed Coin and Bullion for a free coin performance review, 800-221-7694, AmericanFederal.com, AmericanFederal.com. It's not in the Bible, just as a lot of Catholicism that is not in the Bible. More, Protestantism is much more sola scriptura, just, mm-hmm. just the scripture, but... Uh, the the teaching that I got as a kid was an ancient teaching. God did not split the sea until one Jew went up to the top of his head. What does that mean? Into the water. Oh, oh. So huh. showed in, in other words, God does miracles, but we have to we make them possible. Interesting. He doesn't do it without our input. Well, I was really struggling with this concept of prayer for a long time where I said, how, you know, how, how does this, how does this all fit together where God gives us the free will to, to not only do good things and do evil things, but be affected by good things and evil things. How does the free will concept accord with prayer where you are somehow trying to change the outcome of something? And one compelling argument that someone gave to me is that God works alongside our free will. He doesn't, he wants friends, not slaves. Uh, Friends is maybe a different, not, not the best way to put it, but essentially, Co-workers. Co-workers, co-creators with him. And that, you know, if you are demonstrating that you're taking him seriously and your prayers are in accordance with his will, and if they are noble, essentially, he wants to work side, work alongside your free will. Not so much to grant wishes, but to... See, you can even see I'm struggling. Well, it, that's the the value of this discussion. It, it, it well, it's it's forcing both of us to clarify. By the way, while you struggle, can I say something? <laughs> Please go. Because th- this has actually uh, affected me already. I will never say after today that I don't have a strong relationship with God. I have always understood relationship as a sort of emotional bond like I have with you. But it's not the same as what I have with you or with other people close to me in my life. That, see, God, I don't know if God and I, I, I don't even know if, I don't know if any of the words work. All I can tell you is I now realize as a result of already this early part of, of, of this time together 
I really, I really do think about him a lot. And if that doesn't constitute a relationship, then I don't know what does. But that's why I, you dismissed my having a relationship with Beethoven. I'm not sure I, I would say I don't. Okay. I, I would only say in, 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 in the, the, there is an analog because Beethoven has done a great deal for me in what he's given me, his music. God has done a great deal for me in what he's done for me in terms of his, his Bible, especially his Torah. Where I don't ha- where I've always been suspicious of the word relationship is asking God for things, which is a big part of a lot of people's religious life and not part of mine. So that, that's, that's a, a moment of clarity there. And I'm not saying I'm right at all. I love that people pray. When they say they pray for me, when people learned that, that Sue had breast cancer, they, I was very moved by all the people who said they prayed for her. I, 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 there wasn't an iota in me that thought, oh, that's sweet, but doesn't mean anything. I don't think that at all. But so I, I very rarely ask for anything. And the other is, um, I guess outside of the asking for things, I guess I really do have a strong relationship. I think God hears what we're saying right now. Of course. Well, that's a big deal. Uh, and I don't believe Beethoven does. <laughs> I think God knows our every thought, our every instinct, our everything. I think he knows us, knows every part of us more intimately than we know ourselves. Okay, so that so for the atheist and agnostic and secularist listening, th- this, this is too strong to just be nonsense. You know, this is two bright people, pretty rational people who think that. And you can dismiss it as as what as nonsense. You can dismiss it as wishful thinking. And I've thought of that. Is it wishful thinking? But I I, I don't believe it is. So I will ne- never say anymore that I don't have a relationship with God. I have been changed in the last 20 minutes. Do you talk to God? No. That's, I guess that's, that's the arena where I've always been, rem- not remiss, but uh, not comfortable. Not, I felt I would be dishonest if I said I had a relationship with God because I don't, I don't talk to him. That's correct. I don't. My dad did every single night of his life. Wow, interesting. Oh, my father loved God. See, that that's also, that's the other area where I have my trigger warning for people. I don't know if I love God. Well, it's certainly difficult to love God. Well, here's what uh, Joseph Tolushkin and I came up with in our 20s when we wrote our introduction to Judaism called the nine questions people ask about Judaism still in print all these years later I'm proud to say anyway uh, I don't remember which one of us came up with it but because so many things we came up with together but doesn't matter it is hard to love man and God at the same time hmm. that that's well that's the reason you have a difficult time loving God because you love man, you 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 feel for people. The more you feel for people, the harder I think I think it is to love God. He made a world with so much built-in horrible suffering. Now he has his reasons, and I believe that, and it doesn't in any way diminish my obedience to him or my belief that he wants good for me and for everyone but it's it's hard to it's hard to love him by the way i have a proof that it's hard to love him that's why there's a law to love him mm. if it came naturally why would yeah, there be right. a law that's right a lot of things to say well he, he just asked you does god talk to me that that do you mean to julie cuz i i i said no, I, I don't think, think god talks to me 
uh, it, it, not in the sense that that Julie is talking to me now, but he, he, he I, I know this sounds, it sounds to a lot of religious people like third rate communication, but. <laughs> But I, I do think God talks to me through the Torah, and through the prophets. I don't know. I don't know why that's. I see. So wait, does Shakespeare talk to me through his plays? Yes. So, does but does Shakespeare talk to me? No. Mm. He t- he talks. So, does God talk to you? No, he doesn't talk to me. Oh, I, do, I didn't know what you would say, by the way. I know you didn't. And part of me didn't know what I was going to say either. Um, no, no, that's only partially true. No, he doesn't talk to me. You know, I, I when I was in Rome, there was a priest, Father Vinay, who is in Latvia. His diocese are in Bombay, but he's doing missionary work in, in Latvia. And he was on this program that I was on, and he has the gift of reading souls. And I thought it was nonsense. I thought it was well-intentioned, noble nonsense. And I sat there, Dennis, with this priest, and I swear to God, he read my soul. He was, not only did he get so perfect, and and I didn't talk to him at all. I I sat down there and I said. Wait, wait, how long had you spoken before? Oh, oh gosh, maybe maybe a day. I mean, we were we were on the same tour for a day. Well, and what does it mean to read your soul? He sat there and he and he I don't want to do it on the air because it's very personal, but he read the things that I was struggling with and he referenced specific individuals in my life, not by name, but by relation. And Okay, I'm laughing cuz <laughs> no, it's true. I, I mean, I know you very well. Okay, it doesn't matter. No, not by name, but by yeah, relation no, no, with, impre- with many yeah, okay. different people in my life, and maybe not right. many. But all right, I, I, and the, and right. he got it. He okay, completely so, got right, it. Okay, so all right, so what is this? How was this germane he, to God so, talking so to So I, you know, I was so fascinated by this, and and all the other people on the trip said the same thing. They said, you know, they the, per, the Father Vene would go, I know that you're struggling with your sister, and please just get, get grant her. He said that. He, not I'm referencing someone else, but he but he said yes. He my one friend she recounted this and he said I know you're struggling with your sister. I did, know you're fighting she, with her. Wait, she did not mention that to no. him. No, and it, Dennis, so I thought this like, was okay. nonsense, but I it happened. No, no, no. I believe it. I right. I, I, I was knocked off my feet. So again. why do you say read your soul? It's sort of read your life. No, because the, he would talk about loneliness or sad the you, the sadness or the the hub, hubris or the, the like he he got it he got the underlying emotions or character traits that were affecting your life i'm telling you i get, totally understand people who would who would dismiss it me three months ago i would have said no way there's just no way but i saw it and so i asked father vinay i said how does this come to you and he said, and I said, you know, does it happen to you all the time? We were actually on a on a on public transport in Rome, going to St. Paul's outside the walls, and we were talking. And he said, if I turn this on in me, I could look at all these people on this train right now, and I could I could go, okay, that person is having an affair, that person is this. He said, but I turn it off to respect people's privacy. I only do it when they ask it of me. And I said, oh my God. And I said, so what what is what is happening? And he said, I just, it's not like a father of this is Julie Hartman who da da da. It's not like a, a voice. He said, it's just, it's just information that's put in my head. Yeah. Okay. I believe that. I, uh, by the way, I don't, I don't dismiss it at all, but what does it have to do with God talking to you? Or are well, you talking to I, God? I, let me go on a little bit with this and then I'll loop it back. So the more I got to know him and he read my soul the first day of the trip or I see he's, you know, we, kind of called it reading the soul. And then the more I got to know him, I would ask him so many questions. And I said, Father, have you ever asked God why he gave you this gift? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what God said to him? No. He said, because you have devoted your life 
to taking care of the poor, sick, and the disabled who are my best friends. I think that's beautiful. And I think it, I, I, I think some people have the ability to kind of have a communication with God like that. When you ask me, do I, did you say, does God talk to me? Mm -hmm. No. But what I pray for a lot is the grace to understand certain things. And in that way, he, he kind of plants something in me or, or gives something to me. And, you know, I kind of can't figure out, and maybe this sounds like a, a terrible thing to say of, of a person of faith, but I kind of can't figure out if this is really happening or if I am, re you know, like the placebo effect. But in a way, it doesn't matter because it works. I really, what I try to do... That's how I feel about placebos, but go ahead. Yeah, it, I mean, it works. So <laughs> it, why would you stop doing it if it works? But I will, you know, sometimes recently, you know, if I'm on the air and I'm pausing and I think, okay, what am I going to say next? I'll pause and I'll, I'll ask for some help. Like literally for, I was guest hosting for you and there was a, there was a pause and I felt I had been done with my analysis and I didn't want to just keep going on and, and talking for the sake of talking. And I took a long pause and I just shot it upwards. I know that sounds crazy, but I think, I think of giving something up and then it came to me or I had this kind of calm and I, I do, I do this constantly. It's that, so, so again, in that way, it's not a voice, but it's sort of like information or it's sort of a, it's sort of, it can also take the form of something in my day, something that someone said to me or a person that came into my life or a, or a, an event. I, I kind of see that as part of what I was asking for. I don't know if that makes I, I'm happy to get no, specific. No, no, I, I don't have an issue with it. But I just, so I want to keep a scorecard here so as people don't get lost. Are you ready to lose weight but not sure where to start? So I'd like to tell you why I chose PhD weight loss and nutrition. First, Dr. Ashley Lucas has her PhD in chronic disease and sports nutrition. The program is science-based. The PhD program starts with nutrition and is much more. They know 90% of permanent change comes from the mind and they work on eliminating reasons you gained weight in the first place. There are no shortcuts, no pills, no injections, just solid science, science-based nutrition and behavior change. If you're ready to lose weight for, I think, the last time, call 864-644-1900, 864-644-1900. To get started or online at myphdweightloss.com, myphdweightloss.com. Just make the appointment for your one on one consultation. Call today, 864 644 1900. Including me. He doesn't speak to me. Right. Okay. But he, do you speak to him? Oh, 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 oh all yes. the time. All the time. Do yeah. you make requests? This is something I struggle with. I always, I make requests, but I always say if this is in, acc in accordance with your will and if this is in accordance with your, I, I sort of like make you, a preface. Okay. Of, I understand so. if this is not, I, okay, sorry. I, I, I ask for certain things, but I also ask for the grace of understanding if those things don't happen. Okay, that's sweet. And I, I mean, that's, you know, not, so he's, he has a question from Sean. So he thinks that maybe the more important question he says is, do you listen to God? Yeah. Okay. But, but if he doesn't speak to you, what are you listening to? I, I, I ask the same question. What would you want of me right now? And I try to every single day act like God. I know that sounds weird, oh, right. so but I, it's true. Yeah, I, I try to listen to God I too. Try That's to my act life like is trying to listen to God. No, I don't try to act like God in that I'm a moral judge. But it, it, right. with the New yeah. Test, I I try to imitate I try to God. imitate. That's the Christian way. Christ, of putting it. yes. Yeah. So back to the the request part because that's where uh, I I find myself in a, in a minority among religious people. You would not, 
I assume, I mean, it's it's known, correct to the public, that you have a, a, a seriously autistic sister? Oh, yeah. Right, okay. You you would not pray that God heal her? No, I, I actually, in the spirit of full honesty, pray for something a lot different. I pray for her peaceful death. Well, but this is why what we have here is so unique. I mean, the openness by both of us. Uh, because I, I, by the way, I, I totally relate to what you're saying because a lot of her life has just been pain and, and, and sadistic the, and, and, pain and, yeah, by, by, by caretakers who, who were horrible. And, and even when, when it's not in pain, it's, it's, it's there, there isn't any joy like the like joy you would have. I think religious people, a lot of religious people, would have a problem. Not not with your prayer, because you're you're certainly not going to do anything about it. All you do is visit her and, and treat her beautifully. But I think I think a lot of religious people romanticize life and and I don't not not every life ha- has intrinsic meaning and I know that's heretical to say that when, when my mother-in-law whom, whom you vaguely knew yeah. in, in her my mother-in-law was a remarkable brilliant Woman, you you are in love with my wife, properly so. My wife is very much a product of her mother. Mm. Her mother w- was an extraordinary human being. Her mother became a doctor at fifty. <laughs> at fifty, and then <laughs> I became didn't know that. yes, wow. and, and became an extraordinary psychiatrist. Mm. She she was one of the most brilliant psychiatrists, and I've known a, a fair number of them, and I've ever known. And and for the last few years of her life, it was a, a state of dementia. Oh, it was horrible. That uh, same with there, my grandmother. Th- there was nobody there, so to speak. And I hope, by the way, I pray there was nobody there. That's how we feel about uh, 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 my sister. Otherwise, it's 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 torture beyond any torture one can imagine. So I wanted God to take her for her sake. Because I, I, if I'm in that condition, I want God to take me. Because the biggest single thing in my life, personally, is dignity. And I, I don't want to lose my dignity. Right. Well, on this point of requests, because it was very interesting to me that you brought up that your prayer for Aaron came true. I struggle with this because... And maybe this is me making myself the moral arbiter, but I'm not requesting that God gave me give me a million dollars tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not requesting that God make me the Queen of England. You know, I'm not requesting these. That's why I said. Things. That's, but that's why I said I don't think you would pray that God cure your sister. No, that, that it's more likely. Well, you maybe will, I you, should. I mean, no, you, no, no. But 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 I don't think you should. Because but why to, not? I mean, well, what if well, that's then possible? Why, then why not pray that you win the lottery? Because the because I think winning the lottery is something that is superfluous and not. I don't need to win the lottery. Her life would be transformed and she would be alleviated from suffering if she were healed. Right. I don't need a million dollars. But with requests... Oh. He wants to know if it would be... Uh, better for you to use the word that you pray to ease her burden than pray for her death the the problem with that sean is that it, it's just language manipulation because ease her burden is the same as her death there is no way to ease her burden with with her current condition well, well there is i guess with better care with <clears throat> you know i mean so in that sense that's possible but well and I- that has happened it has. It has. She's in such good care now. And and we view that as a miracle, actually. We view that. I was never, when I was growing up, I was never praying. I think my, my mom and dad say that they would pray for, 
for Gina's, um, for a better situation for Gina. And it did come true after a solid decade of sadistic, wretched suffering, though, and litigation. I mean, just the, we call that the dark decade of just terror, really, for her and for us. But so, so yes, it, I guess it did come true. But, but I don't know why it didn't come true sooner. Maybe that's uh, not fair of me to to well, say. And, and you don't know that it came true because I know. of God. Well, and also, right? I, I don't know, know if it came true with, permanently. Right. Okay. That that that's another issue. But we, you don't know that yeah. her better situation was done by God. Uh, yeah, it actually seems very much like it was done by my parents okay. relentlessly right. litigating right. with the state of California. So so actually, I don't so much view that to your point. It's a very good point you raised. I don't view that so much as an act of God as right. it is my parents. So uh, how exactly do we differ in our relationship with God? Well, I, I thought we did. I thought we did too. I think, I think here's where we're the same. We both ask what God would want us to do right, primarily. Right. I think what's different is I speak with God. Oh yeah, I that's right. I talk to him directly. Yeah. And maybe I make more requests than you do. But let me tell you some of my requests and then we we can we can judge them. I I request that with people specifically, we'll make it about you. I request that you live a long and healthy life. Obvi- obviously, I make all these prayers for my parents and family members, but I'm making it personal to this to this podcast. But I request that you live a long and happy and healthy life, that Sue lives a long, healthy and happy life, that Reed's baby is healthy and, you know, that Felicia and Aaron's baby is, is healthy and has a beautiful life, that Felicia doesn't struggle with, you know, she, I, I don't mean to expose private information, but she was struggling with morning sickness, that that burden is alleviated, that Jack and Daniel have a prosperous, healthy, happy upbringing. And, you know, I, I th- those are the things I pray for. And so are those requests? I don't know. Well, if they're not requests, what are they? I, I, this is not a challenge. No, I agree. I, I, they are requ- just... they are requests, but they're See, not. All, 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 but they're what, not. Let me say, tell you how I hear it. Yep. There, I hear it in two ways. I hear what a wonderful human being Julie is. That's that. Oh, I, I, I think you don't even have to react because I know you'll dismiss it. So don't even react. I'm just telling you, and everybody listening knows it's. I'm right. It, it says. I think it says much more about you than about God or theology or anything else. Okay, doesn't matter. You could, or if you want to answer, you can answer. But the, the that's that's one that's one thing. The other is, and this is the argument of those against me for not making requests. That not everyone who makes requests is assuming God will say yes. Of course, I'll handle it but they are close enough to God that they want to articulate what concerns them. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I have zero argument against that. Okay, I just want to make that clear. I'm, I'm not that close. It's funny how even that, because this is really, I've never talked about this as much. <laughs> I've talked about it in five-minute chunks. So it's, I'm just now asking myself, am I close to God? <laughs> so how, on the one hand, I'm thinking, how can I think of God all the time? Constantly ask, what, what does God want from me? <laughs> and not, isn't that make, isn't that definitionally close? But when people say close, they think emotionally close. Well, I think that's a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. I think that the, in the New Testament, God is emotionally close to you. He is a human being. He is personally close to you. Whereas in the Old Testament, he's not. And by the way, I love both for that reason. I want to understand God in the terms of the Old Testament, and I want to understand God in the terms of the New Testament. If I solely understood God in terms of the New Testament, I'm not so sure that I would quake in his moral in 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 the light mm-hmm. of his moral authority 
if I didn't have the Old Testament. And similarly, if I didn't have the New Testament, I don't know that I would feel, maybe I would, but I don't know if I would feel as easily that he is a presence in my everyday life and that I can embody him. It's, it's interesting because, you know, a few minutes ago, I was saying that I try to be like God and I called I called to mind what the serpent said to Adam and Eve, tempting them to eat the apple that you will be like, you will be like God. And, and it's, it's a weird thing because in a way you want to emulate God in some ways, and you do not want to think of yourself as emulating God in most other ways. Hence the compatibility of the old and new Testament. But going back to the, but I just, sure, sure. I, 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 I'm not only the representative of Dennis here, I'm sort of the representative of Judaism. Understandably, I there are many religious Jews who have the bond with God that you speak of with, with Jesus. I, I, so I'm I, glad you I, brought this I, up. I don't, but there are many who do. And that's not to say that God, I mean, I, I think one of the most beautiful parts of the, the Old Testament is God breathed, uh, gave life, the, it's the nostrils quote. See, I'm saying how beautiful it is, and then I cannot quote, quote it by heart. But God, God formed you. He and breathed the breath of life in, into into the nostrils. I think there are beautiful passages like that that very intimately tie you with God. So I'm I'm glad you raised well, that. Well, and certainly in the Psalms, I mean, you know, oh, Christians that's such are a good in, point. Well, yeah, that's that Old is Testament. such a good point. Yeah. Yes. That so, is really true. That, the Psalms, Psalms are, are, is sort of the favorite book of many Christians. You know what? That's that is an excellent point. I didn't yeah. think about that. So it, it's it's the the Torah is not uh, touchy feely. Touchy feely, <laughs> right? Part of the reason I love the Torah, but it, it but later, like the Psalms, uh, absolutely is the. What has happened, my, and you know I have a love affair with Christians, so that just, just for the record. Uh, what has happened historically and, and, and to the present day with, with some or even many Christians, not most, is the, the touchy-feely, which is beautiful, has overwhelmed the moral judge. Mm. I mean, I agree. I completely agree. I We can talk about that. I mean, I have gone into some churches that are so touchy-feely, and they're, they're like a hippie concert. I'm like, this is not God. This is just not God. But I, I want to go back for a moment to this whole requests thing in prayer, because I was struggling earlier with, and, and, and every day I struggle with it, you know, does God answer prayers do do prayers count i think they do i think that god wants to work alongside your free will not as somebody who grants wishes or to use a dennis prager term n- not to be someone who's a cosmic butler but someone who's by the way dennis you have influenced me so much when i pray i go god i am not trying to make you my cosmic butler right now from the creators of jesus revolution comes a new film that's bound to touch your heart white bird a wonder story discover the moving tale of julian as he uncovers his grandmother's incredible journey to escape nazi occupied france during world war ii based on the beloved book by the best-selling author of wonder this inspiring film demonstrates how one simple act of kindness can create ripples that last a lifetime Directed by the visionary behind Finding Neverland and featuring stellar performances by Gillian Anderson and Academy Award winner Helen Mirren, White Bird promises to be a cinematic experience you won't forget. Catch it in theaters starting October 4th. For tickets and more details, visit whitebird.movie. The way, thank you so much for Dennis Breaker. <laughs> and I said, thank you so much for the for the fact that I had basically no religion, and he was the first person that you put in my life. Speaking of which, I think that was an act of God. That makes me really believe in God. But but on this prayer subject, I do think God works alongside your free will. But when I make requests, 
that he act alongside my free will in a certain way, I am acting them, I am asking them in a way that I believe is in accordance with his principles. Again, I'm not asking to win the lottery. I'm not asking to uh, be transformed and look like a supermodel. I'm not asking for, you know, like superfluous things. I'm asking for the health of and happiness of my family. I'm asking that I find a great man to marry and have children. I, you know, I, in other words, I'm asking things that I think God wants me to do. I always make a note of deference that, of course, I may not understand everything and that this is my human understanding of things that I want. But I'll tell you, you know, a few months ago, I was really, you know what this is, I was struggling with something personal in my life that really, really broke my heart. And I went into church and I was praying and just this line came out where I said, God, please help me do what I know you want me to do. I want to get married. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to help save Western civilization. I want to be a pillar in my community. I wanted this, but, but I'm lost. Please help me do what I know you want me to do. And I think that's fair because if God doesn't want me to do those things, then what does he want me to do? Seriously, like what what else would God want me to do besides those things that I asked for? I'm not asking for a specific, you know, make me the the next, you know, well, Fox when, News host or something. I'm not asking for a specific thing, but I'm asking for a general... Well, if God forbid you got a terrible illness, you, you would pray that he heal you. Yeah, and by the way, true. I would pray that he heals you too. Yeah. So there, that is a specific thing. You're right. And we don't know if that would be in, a, in accordance with God's will. No. But well, does it no, count? I, 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 see, I don't agree with you on that. Uh, if it's not in accord with God's will that you not die young, then, then, I don't, then God's will is so inscrutable as... as as to be foolish language for human beings. I mean, I, I don't. It make it would make no sense. I mean, did did God want six million Jews slaughtered in in five years? Did God did God want five million Ukrainians slaughtered in two years? Did God want sixty million Chinese slaughtered in in in, in, in what a few years during during you know the, the great leap forward? These are not happening. The notion in accord with your will it is uh, is correct in, for example, I often will say before I give a speech, oh God, uh, I, I just want to say what you want me to say. It's mm, a common thing for me. I say that all the time. To, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's God's will in, in that sense. That's, that's his, so to speak, his moral will. But... We can't fool ourselves. It, it, do X only if it's in accord with your will. Then the implication is, or s some degree of implication, is that it's God's will that all the people I just mentioned I know. die. I know. And uh, by the way, my father did believe that. My father who spoke to God every single night of his life and loved God uh, did believe and he was an Orthodox Jew. He did believe that the Holocaust was God's will. Why? Because his his argument, I don't I don't share it, but I I, I don't belittle it. Said, Dennis, you're telling me that something so huge, God just watched. Yeah. Well, I think that there's permissive will and then there's active will. And I think that God gives us the free will to, as I said, do evil things, do good things, and be affected by evil things and good things. But I also do believe that there are times when God can step in and act. And that's why I am prayerful. And that's why I endeavor to live a truly noble life. Because I want him to, I, I want to work God? along. Do I love him? Yeah. I never asked you that. I don't even know what you're going to say. I do. I really do, actually. And at times I've been 
very um, upset that he would allow such things. But I do love him. I'm really grateful to him. I mean, but then again, I'm well aware that my life makes it very easy for me to love God. That's my jewels. Of that's, course. That's really, I would have to be crazy. That's a very important Are statement. you kidding? I'm an and American. That's the I reason do, that's the I, reason I find it hard to love God because I realize my life is so atypical of the staggering amount of suffering on earth. I don't when you you get it, I suspect, because based on what you just said, you get it that I find it hard to love God. Uh, of, of course. I mean, I know people who have lost parents so young. They have seen their parents die of cancer and the, the body just rots. How can you love God? when? So when what's that, your answer? How can you? Yeah, you just asked a good question. Well, I think you can, I think that you can love that, he actually provides a, a remedy for that. Okay, so there was this girl. Wait, what's the remedy? I'll tell you. So there was this girl, I'm thinking of her. I met her on my Europe trip, oh, beautiful girl. And she just lost her mother to cancer. And the mother just, again, like just rotted away for 10 months and perished. And I said, I saw her two weeks after it happened and she had tears in her, just always tears in her eyes, but wasn't always letting them out. And I said to her, how are you okay? How are you dealing with this? And she said, I have faith in God. If I didn't have faith in God, I would be lost. And I said, what do you mean? And she said that a priest came in and spoke to the mother and said, I want you to know that it is going to be such a small amount of time in the scope of eternity until you see your daughter and sons and husband again. This is so hard, it seems so unfair and so sadistically wretched, but this is in this human life, it is a tiny, tiny fraction of the scope of eternity when you will be together again. Yeah. And that is the bedrock of faith that is getting my friend through this catastrophe. Right. I, I happen and to imagine, believe that. I happen to believe that too. And imagine if she didn't have that. Imagine if she thought that she would never, ever see her mother again. Ever. That would be a crippling thing to live with. So I think it, it's easy. That's what the atheist believes. That's why I asked them, well, do you hope you're right or wrong? You know, I love God. The reason I love God is because I feel like he's given me a divine toolkit it's so cool. Like I, before, for instance, I, you know something that, that is a fixture of my life now? Do not fear. Hmm. That is, I learned from you, the most repeated line. I learned that from in, Rabbi Wozniak. Rabbi Wozniak. Just, just for the record. In the, that is like, if you adopt that, you are, you are thriving. So that's why I love God. I love God because I'm so appreciative of what he's given me, but I actually love God because I'm appreciate I'm appreciative of not so much the external things or like the the talk show or the this or that, though I certainly am, but the internal toolkit that he's given me to to survive life. Do you love God? I can't say I do, uh, but do you know what the biggest single argument because I just think in terms of reason I, it's, it's, it's the way I'm built I don't take credit for it I don't get blamed for it but here is a rational argument <laughs> that I present to myself for loving God that and I, I alluded to it earlier that there is a commandment to love God That's in Deuteronomy, and Moses is is the divine author, so to speak, combination of God and Moses who wrote Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy means deutero, deutero is second. So it's the second law. It's, it's Moses' review of the rest of the Torah. And the fact that God slash Moses, not that Moses is God, God and or Moses, tells us to love God does make God lovable to me. Mm, wow, why? Be because 
God knows it's hard. So two, two things resonate to me. One, God himself understands it is not easy to love me. Just as it's not easy to love the stranger, and I told you to love the stranger. Right. It's hard to love me, and I'm telling you to love me. The other part is Moses and or God thought it's pretty important to love God. Why? Because it's so easy not to. And then just throw him out. Yeah. Well, you following God, I think, requires a bit of love of God. I don't think that you can just follow something that you don't love. You can respect people or things that you don't love. Yeah, well, that's right. But incorporating God into your life, especially to the extent that you have, I think that there's a part of you that loves God, a Uh, big part of you that loves God. I hope you're right. I, I don't... I don't directly relate to it. Well, here, here's another thing. One minute, Sean has a question. Mm-hmm. Is obedience more important than love? Yes, but here, he, yes, uh, of course it's true. I love God, but I don't, but I don't do what He says. Uh, and by the way, there's a lot of people who are like that. Uh, I'm sorry who, to say. Oh, of course. There are a lot of religious people who say, "Oh, I love God, I love God," and then and then they they treat their fellow human being dishonestly. It's it's going to be one of the sermons of my uh, of my uh, high holy day services. How do we explain n- n- uh, unethical religious people? It's starting to haunt me again. It haunted me when I wrote the nine questions at the at your exactly your age, twenty four, and it it I've sort of you know it's always been present but not obsessive. I'm now obsessing over it. Why are so many religious people rotten? <laughs> A lot are, that's for sure. A lot are. And, and, and doesn't it puzzle you? Yeah. We should talk about that another time. It's another subject, but it, it's... I, I often think when I meet, whether it's Christian or Jew, I, I, I go, wait, how, do you, how are you treating this, this person this way? And, and, and you're religious. I don't, I don't... It's bizarre to me. That I don't expect religious people to be sinless. I'm not an idiot, but this gratuitous corruption and and or or, or I mean, it's really worthy. I, I don't want to get into it because I do want to get into it, but I don't want to get into it now because it's too big a subject. How do religious people do bad things? I don't mean sin. I mean really bad things. Okay. Not weak mm-hmm. things that 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 sin is the result of weakness. You know, a, a religious man had an affair because he, he, he was he was weakened by his sex drive on, on a business trip. Okay, I, I, that's not a puzzle to me. But there, you know, who molesting a child and you're religious? How how the hell do you do that? Well, they're that? not really religious. Well, okay, so this is the great great question. Okay, if that's true, then this is my argument to Christians who believe at the, um, that it's all faith. I don't believe Christians believe that. But they wouldn't be, they're not really faithful. Okay, it is impossible. but how do, you, how do you know that? Because of their behavior. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So then the Christian, even the Christian who says it's it's salvation is through faith alone is saying, but I, I know you don't have faith by how you act. Well, no offense to that Christian, but that Christian doesn't understand that faith without works is dead. Right. Okay. Uh, that, that Well, you know Luther wanted that uh, book of James removed from the New Testament. Did you know that? I did know That's that. That's a cool one. I anyway, did. that is another subject. Well, I... I we, we, we're closing in, so just... I just, know, I yeah. understand. Well, the, the, this is a close-in, but it's also for another episode and open up, but I, I think I... And look, trust me, I am well aware. Easy for me to say with my life. I get it. But I... It's ha- not easy for you to say. Uh, I give you more credit than that. You struggle with the problem of an evil world. 
And, and that is so true. It's not. It, it, and I, 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 I have seen it's not that I have stared down say. the ugly face of evil. You have no idea how many times. Okay. I have. So I appreciate you're giving me that credit, but never. I have. I have an abundantly blessed life compared correct. to most. That's but, correct. So, um, but I have really seen that. G- this world is actually an act of love. I know that sounds so bizarre, but God gave us freedom. He he gave us free will to mess. I mean, even if you think of somebody dying in a car accident, it is a horrifically sad thing. But in a way, it's showing that God is not just like the puppeteer who is pulling the strings. Part of the, the buy-in of this world is that you are affected by other people's free will and other right. people are affected by, by your d- free so will. So did we do an hour on luck or not? We might have. I don't know if we have gone... Check into it because... We- you're on my side then there is luck in life yes i mean but there are like everybody is i i remember on this trip i was asking them ask you know all these religious people i was with why is my sister autistic and no no i want my dad because i have a stepson who's autistic but there's there's no comparison in the amount of pain Yes. Your sister was given versus my stepson, who was was somewhat of a joy. Right. And I was asking them this question, and, you know, not to expose my family history too much, but there is, my grandmother took this experimental drug in the 1950s that ended up affecting my mother's um, ability to carry a child healthily. And that is what they believed caused her autism. And so what they were saying is it was it was the 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 actions of your your grandmother and that doesn't mean your grandmother should be you know blamed but it is the it is human actions that lead sometimes to catastrophe and i have to say there's a weird comfort in that because again it's like okay we chose to be in this world god has given us a toolkit through the the torah and the beatitudes and all of these things of, of how to deal with it and the rest of it is really freedom to do good, to do evil, to be affected by good and be affected by evil. And that, that people go, oh, well, why, why did God make a world like this in the first place? Well, what is the alternative that we're enslaved automatons, yeah. that we're like a wind up so doll? I forgot the thinker. There was a, I don't, I, I don't know, was it Leibniz? Uh, yes, well, yes, I love Leibniz. Okay, so I don't know if it was him. He wrote Theodicy in 1710. See, folks. No, it's such a good, it's so good. Your average 24-year-old <laughs> does not know that. <laughs> well, it's a really good book. You All right, it. Uh, so is he the one, I don't know, but he might have been, who said his argument was, this is the best possible that world. That was him, you're right. That was him? Yep. So that's a very interesting, I, I deal with that a lot. God could not make a world without malaria. I mean, that that's in effect what he's saying. God well, could not make a world where until the, the, the most recent past, half your children died before the age of five. What do you think about that? I, I don't have an answer. I, I don't have an answer. Uh, I, I, what can I say? I don't. I don't. I, I, I'm going to say whether God could have made a better world. You know how I sort of view it. I sort of view it with Adam and Eve. You know, like the horse races, or like when somebody opens a door and all the cattle run out. That's sort of how I view it. God's like, okay, He opened the door and all of us ran out. And there, really, and there's, and we have done remarkable things and we have done depraved things we and should we're do an hour on the, the metaphors i i think in metaphor i think terms. in metaphors too but but that's freedom he let out the 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 gates and he said go ahead i'm gonna let you do and and if you believe that we, as i do that this is a small thing in the scope of eternity that we're only here for 70 and 80 years i think that changes the whole game Say 70, 80, 90, or 100. That's right. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I was going off of the average life expectancy. Ooh, hey, it shows I don't think of you in terms of your age. You should take I, that I, as a compliment. Oh, I do. I, I don't think of me either in that way. Uh, 
for good reason. For, anyway, what was that? If people enjoyed this conversation, they should. Oh, so we did do a luck episode 120. What number is this? Okay. All right. This was, uh, this was, this was precious. Yes. Uh, please let us know your thoughts. You can email me at Julie at Julie Hartman.com and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Julie R Hartman. Dennis on Instagram at the Dennis Prager and on Twitter at, is your Twitter Dennis Prager? Go to Dennis, uh, Dennis Prager. Prager. Com. And Prager you. Shalom everyone. Bye. This was really fun. Bye.